let's use the Bing's and uh, lexicon to do this. What I'm going to do is to show you the complete code for uh, the basic analysis and then we'll go over the code step by step. Of course I'll be using pipes and uh, I'll be showing you the result at the end of each of the steps within the pipe process. Okay, so uh, we've got tidy books and we're doing a set of processes here and then uh, we're storing it in a data frame called Jane Austen sentiment. Okay, so we're taking tidy books and we're doing an inner join with the Bing lexicon, that is get sentiments Bing. Okay, so what this is going to do is uh, it's going to take all the words and then associated with the Bing sentiments. And I'll show the first the entire code and then let's take a look at what this segment of the code alone does. Okay, so if you do this, this is what you're going to get. So you've got all the uh, words uh, within the within all of the books, right? And of course, we've already uh, done some processing with line numbers and chapter numbers and so on from the previous uh, chapter and then we saw the code for that. So what it's doing is it's taking every word. Of course, it's done an inner join with sentiments Bing. So only the words that appear in the Bing lexicon will even appear in our results. Okay, so the first word actually occurs on line number 16 because the other initial words that were there before this within the document, within the book, uh, all of those words don't appear in the sentiment uh, lexicon at all and therefore they don't even figure in our results. Okay, so now you see here uh, that uh, since respectable is positive, good is positive, etc, etc. Okay, so for every word all we've done is we have simply uh, added on its sentiment with respect to the Bing lexicon. Okay, so clearly as I've pointed out only the words in the lexicon will remain, all other words are gone because they don't fit the join. Okay, now let's go one step further and We've, this part is what we saw earlier. Now let's also count the books, uh, count the, uh, uh, you know, for by book and index and sentiment. Okay, look at what we are doing with index. We are saying index equals line number integer divided by 100. Okay, so what this will do is uh, the lines 0 to 99 will have an index of 0, right? Because if you divide any of those uh, an integer division by 100, the quotient is 0 and lines 100 to 199 will all have an index of 1 and then lines 200 to 299 will have an index of 2 and so on. So here is what we are doing here as I had described earlier. We are breaking the book, uh, we are breaking each book into chunks of 100 lines, right? So that's what index is going to indicate, okay? So now we are doing a count of the book index sentiment combination. Okay, so for example, book is sense and sensibility. Index, let's say, is zero, which is the first 100 lines. And sentiment is positive. So we'll get a count of how many times a positive word occurs in the first 100 lines of the book. Right? Then you'll have how many times a negative sentiment occurs in the first 100 lines of the book and so on and so on and so on okay so for every book for every line uh, for every index every chunk of 100 lines we'll get all the positive sentiments and all the negative sentiments right so if you see the results this is what you're going to see sense and sensibility okay index is zero which means in the first 100 lines there were 20 negative sentiment words and 47 positive sentiment words and of course there were lots of other words which were not associated with any sentiment and therefore they're left out. Okay, so that's what this is going to do. It's going to take every book and within every book it's going to break it into chunks of 100 lines and for every 100 lines we're going to get how many positive sentiment words were there, how many negative sentiment words were there. Okay, and we're going to have this for all the books. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is notice here that negative and positive are both sitting in one column, right? Now what we're going to do, what we want to do is to take positive minus negative as the net sentiment for a particular index. In other words, we want to say in the first 100 lines, what is the result of positive sentiment minus negative sentiment, which is the overall sentiment, positive minus negative, right? So in order to do that, it'll be convenient for us to spread this into two columns, 
right? Put Keep the negatives in one column, positive in one column, and then we can easily find the net by subtracting. That is why we are using the spread function to do this, okay? So it'll be a good idea for you even after the uh, lecture, even after the video, to take a look at this code and work through it step by step to understand exactly what it's doing. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do, of course, is to examine what happens at the next step with the spread. And as I had said earlier, what happens is the spreading process takes the column sentiment, okay, and then uh, breaks it uh, into positive and negative. And of course, we've got the count of each of those sentiments, so that's what is being filled in here. Okay, so now what we have is for every book index combination, we have how many negative sentiments, words, how many positive sentiment words. Of course, then it's a next simple step that we are going to see here, which is to compute the, uh, the net sentiment, which is positive minus negative. Okay, so that's what we get here. For 47 minus 20 is 27. 27, 54 minus 22 is 32, etc., etc. Okay, so now what we have available with us is for every book, for every chunk, which is 100 lines, we have the net sentiment. Okay, so here you have the book, Sense and Sensibility. Here you have the index, which is zero, the first 100 lines. And here you have the net sentiment. Next 100 lines, sentiment is 32. Next 100 lines, sentiment is 19, and so on, right? So initially, as you can see here, the book starts off with very positive sentiments overall. Okay, so now the next thing we are going to do is to take this and create a plot of how the sentiment is flowing across the book. And of course, we want to group it all by book. So let's see what happens here. So we are using ggplot. And of course, we are using geom bar. But within geom bar, since we already have all the counts and so on, uh, we know from our prior discussion in uh, ggplot that by default, if you use geom bar, it'll try to do some counting of its own, right? But we don't need to do any counting because we've already done all the necessary counting here, right? So we just want to say, okay, here's the index, here's the count. That's all we need, right? So that's why we are using here geom bar stat equals identity. That is, we are telling ggplot, look, you don't do any counting. Just plot what I've asked you to plot, plot it as a bar. Okay, and then show dot legend equals false because we're saying we don't want it to show any legends. And then we are saying facet wrap by book. In other words, create a separate bar chart for each book and break it into two columns. And then we're saying scales equals free X. In other words, we are saying, let the X axis scales be free, right? By default, it'll make all the scales the same. But of course, we know that different books are of different length. So we want the x-axis to be free. So if you do that, this is the uh, result that you get, net result, right? So you can see here, uh, all the books, in fact, start off very positive. Okay, this book has some negative right up front, the pride and prejudice, and so on. Okay, so the beauty of this is that we've taken a whole book like Sense and Sensibility, and then we are able to trace how the sentiment of the book is flowing. And with one glance, we can get the whole idea okay so that that's pretty interesting that we can summarize the essence of an entire book in a very quick way in terms of sentiment okay so here you've got this this book is mostly positive but towards the end there's a huge amount of negativity that comes in and of course the book ends on a positive note this book persuasion seems to be completely uh, almost entirely positive sentiment kind of a book very little of negative sentiment occurrences. Similarly with Emma too, there's just a little bit of negative sentiment occurring here and so on. Okay, so you can do sentiment analysis in this way, right? Now, how does uh, this, something like this relate to, let's say, uh, interactions of customers or let's say somebody is tweeting on a regular basis, you want to find out, okay, uh, what is their overall sentiment? Uh, how has it been for the entire year? Right? Then you can see, okay, they seem to be pretty happy in January, this, that, and uh, let's say around uh, uh, around uh, September, they became very sad and, and all of that stuff, okay? Uh, or you can even look at it in a different way. If you take the, uh, let's say the customer service scenario, right? It is possible that the company may aggregate the complete customer sentiment on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or something, and then take a look at how the customer sentiment is flowing over time. 
right? So maybe the company did an advertising campaign, right? And then, or they did some major product changes and so on. And then they may see, okay, have these changes had any impact in terms of how the customers view our products, okay? So this general idea of tracking sentiments over some kind of a time scale is pretty useful, okay? So that's the idea of uh, plotting the sentiments of multiple books using a single uh, lexicon. Now what we're going to do is to take one book and then plot the sentiment by using all the three lexicons and then we'll compare how things come out.